Hey everyone, uh, it's Toby back again with another video um, with an update to the Franchise Hockey Manager Advanced Analytics project uh, that I've been working on for the last few months. So uh, apologies that there haven't been many updates, but I have been working hard on something that I'm very excited to share with you guys today. Uh, so as you can see from the title of this spreadsheet, we, I think... Uh, are ready to call this version 2.0 uh, of the project. Um, the reason for that is because I have made some significant changes to my modeling process, uh, as well as come up with a new tool uh, that can be used to uh, essentially prepare your spreadsheets for use within Google Sheets. That way, um, the issues with you know the slow loading and crashing of Chrome, all of that has been taken care of. Uh, we're going to clean the spreadsheets before we put them into uh, Google Sheets. Uh, it's really cool, and uh, I'm I'm super excited about it. So um, the first part of this video is going to be going over that uh, as well as uh, also very exciting. Uh, I figured out how to make this spreadsheet compatible with um, expansion leagues. So uh, historical and custom leagues are, are right around the corner. They're not quite ready yet, but if you've added more than 32 teams uh, to your league, um, I will be going over how to uh, very quickly add in a 33rd team or 34th team, however many it might be, um, and it'll all just work right away with the spreadsheet. So that's super exciting. Uh, and then the second part of the video, after we go through those things, the second part of the video is going to be talking about the new modeling process uh, that I'm using for expected goals uh, and the replacement level data. So if you're not interested in any of that, if you don't want to know more about how all that works, uh, I totally understand. Um, just know that those stats, the, especially the replacement level stats, um, are very different in how they're produced now, uh, which means that you shouldn't use a version one spreadsheet to compare those numbers uh, with a version two. They're going to be wildly different. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, if you do stick around, I'll go over why that is the case. But just know that going forward, if you're going to use version two, stick with version two, and then you can start comparing the numbers uh, a little bit closer. So, okay, let's jump right into it. So, um, same thing as before, you're going to, in Franchise Hockey Manager, uh, when you're ready to export, click Export CSV. It'll put the file into your Import, uh, Export folder of the save uh, that you're currently in. Uh, so you can see Import, Export, CSV. Um, this over so you can see it. Save games. The name of your save import export csv that's where they all are now uh down below you're going to see a link either in the spreadsheet um i'll, I'll put a link in the spreadsheet i'll also put one in the description of the video um but there will be a link that'll take you to a web page that looks like this this is i'm running a local um version uh so this is not the address <laughs> click the link um but You'll see there are what seven, yeah, seven files for you to upload into this browser. Uh, so go ahead and browse, get to your uh, correct save game folder where you just exported those CSVs, and just upload the files that it specifies here. Uh, we've got box score skater summary, period scoring summary, uh, player ratings is next. Then team records, player master, is team lines, and team data. Now you do have to upload all of them, um, and that's just because the way that the uh, formulas run, it uses data from multiple spreadsheets. They all have to be uploaded uh, in order to uh, get it to work. Once this table pops up, you'll know that everything is done on my end, um, and you're good to download. Uh, so you've got these four download links here. 
This this right here is basically what your clean to skater stats spreadsheet looks like now. You don't need to worry about any of this. Uh, Sheets will handle the rest. So just go ahead and download all four of these uh, files that get exported. And then go ahead and head over to the uh, Google Sheet. If it's, uh, you'll, you'll likely be working with the blank uh, version 2.0. So you just make a copy, save it to your drive. Call this YouTube test. All right, and you'll be taken to a new version of uh, the spreadsheet that you'll be able to edit. Go ahead and go to the team records, import a file, and the um, the CSVs are going to get exported into your whatever your default downloads folder is um, on your computer. So just keep that in mind um, wherever your uh, downloads end up, that's where you're going to find those uh, cleaned versions uh, of the files. So for team records, upload cleaned team records. Google Sheets has come out with an update that recognizes a semicolon as a separator in uh, CSV files. So now you can just leave this on detect automatically, import data, team lines, import your cleaned team lines file, replace its selected cell, port, player master, port, upload, you have the cleaned player master file, replace, detect automatically, import, clean skater stats, import, Replace port. And that's it. You are done. You can now go to your advanced metrics page. Oh, I will make sure I get this fixed uh, before I upload uh, this video. I thought I had fixed this already, but um, if if you get if you get here and it's not it's not showing uh, your lines or um, you can't select players or anything, um, it's likely because uh, here on this utility page, um, there's not enough room for it to expand the full roster. Um, and that's because now uh, with the new uh, new spreadsheet um, or new box score data that we're using uh, as opposed to the um, um, regular season stats like we used before. Uh, there is um, the added benefit that any players who uh, played part of the season in the NHL and then finished the season in the AHL or whatever, as long as they've played one game in the NHL for the team, um, they'll be included in the spreadsheet. So um, even if they're in the AHL at the time that you've exported uh, the file, they still are going to show up and you'll be able to see how they did compared to the rest of the NHL in those games in which they played. Now, sample size, of course, still is um, something to consider, uh, but it is an added benefit, especially because I was seeing, you know, often I would run into someone who played maybe 50 games in the NHL and then uh, was sent down to the AHL or something like that um, and ended up playing elsewhere and wasn't showing up in the in the spreadsheet. So now those players will be uh, accounted for. So now you can see everything here is working correctly. Um, just to show we can, you know, jump to these other... Uh, players on the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, all the lines should be displaying. They are. That's good. Um, and then all of our league data uh, appears correctly. So that's it. That's all it takes. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll get that bug fixed with there not being enough room uh, for the full team roster, so you won't have to worry about any of that. Um, and that's it. That's it. It's it's awesome. Uh, this has been uh, a huge benefit. Um, 
to have, especially just in my own testing. It, it's making everything so much faster. Um, very, uh, yeah, very encouraged. Um, one thing that I'm going to point out now, and I don't know how big of an issue it's going to be, but um, this website is hosted through uh, a service called Shiny Apps. Um, Shiny Apps is a package for R Studio, uh, the or for R. R Studio is the interface, but R is a programming language, which is what I'm using to uh, get all this data uh, and put it into a CSV and and do these th this modeling and, and all of that. Shiny is a package that allows you to host websites like this and provide an interactive uh, uh, or an interface for people to uh, add their own data and whatever. Um, the thing is, with the free tier of Shiny Apps, which is what I'm using to host this, uh, there is a limit to 25 active hours uh, of people using the app. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take uh, for people to hit that, and I don't know if you know just leaving the page open is going to count towards the 25 hours. So we will see. I have found a couple articles on how to turn a Shiny Apps web app into um, a portable desktop app um, so that might be that might be the the path forward if we are running into issues um, with uh, you know the active hours getting used up uh, it's and it's once a month once a month you get 25 hours of active use so if we are running into those issues I will um, certainly continue looking into making a, an offline a desktop app to do this same thing um, in the meantime, I will keep the older versions, the version one of the spreadsheet, um, available, uh, just in case you know you're unable to use this uh, this tool, you can still use that old version, no problem. Um, I think that covers everything. That covers all the new stuff uh, for for this uh, this update. Um, Okay, now I'm gonna go into uh, adding in an expansion team. So uh, you'll see right here, Matt Duchesne doesn't have a team logo. And that is because Matt Duchesne plays for the Baltimore Justice, which is the uh, 33rd NHL team. Uh, to add in a 33rd NHL team, you're gonna come over to the team info tab uh, on the far left. And you need to know your team ID you need to know the uh, league ID. Well, if if you're playing in the NHL, league ID is going to be zero, um, and then uh, everything else is self-explanatory. To find the team ID, uh, you're going to go over to team records, and it'll be the last team uh, that shows up on the list. If you have more than one, you might have to try a couple different numbers until you're getting the right uh, the right players matching up with the roster. Um, Otherwise, uh, uh, you know, you can look in the the team. What is it? I think it's the team data CSV. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure it's team data. That that will also show um, which team is which. Uh, I haven't set this up to import that team data CSV just yet. I am working on that. The only reason I haven't yet uh, is because the logos are tied to Google Sheets. Um, I haven't figured out how to use R um, or Shiny to uh, include logos uh, in its export. Once I figure that out, it should be smooth sailing and we can use the team data uh, CSV um, that gets cleaned and exported. But until then, uh, just go to your team records. Um, you likely are not going to have, uh, you won't have numbers that show up here for your uh, expected points and point differential. Uh, if that's the case, like it is for me right now, uh, all you have to do is highlight these two cells, click this little box, drag down. Um, if you drag too far, no big deal. Highlight the ones you don't need, delete them. Totally fine. Uh, so, the 34th team here, uh, or 33rd, because we have column headers, uh, 34th row 
team ID 5088, that is Baltimore. So 5088, league ID 0 because we're in the NHL. Enter the name, the Baltimore Justice abbreviation. And then for the logo, uh, assuming you're using a custom logo uh, or you, you have a logo for your team, um, you can find that in the uh, saved games uh, graphics and then logo teams folder right here save games go to your save name graphics logo underscore teams uh, to make this quick I just have my team logo right down here on the desktop um, so what you're gonna do is go to insert image insert image in cell click upload drag and drop your image uh, for your team right here it'll pop up in the cell to double check you can come over here this is where we have all of the teams listed alphabetically you can see Baltimore now has the correct logo next to it as do all the other teams and their team ID is showing up uh, with them alphabetically uh, okay and then going back to the advanced metrics page that's it we have added another team everything is done now we can come to the drop down Baltimore now shows up. We have our lines up here. We have, uh, you can change all these, all three of these to Baltimore. And we have our players. Everyone shows up. It's done. Uh, super excited about that. Um, very easy, very straightforward. Um, you shouldn't shouldn't run into any problems as long as you follow those steps. And if you do, uh, as I said before, you can just delete the sheet, start again, um, come back to this video if you have any questions, run into any problems. Uh, let me know on Discord or YouTube or Reddit. Um, those are all reliable ways to uh, get a hold of me. Uh, okay, now moving on to the second part of this video, which is the new modeling process. So, as I said. Uh, I've redone expected goals uh, and replacement level stats. Uh, the reason I've been able to do that is because in the most recent update uh, to Franchise Hockey Manager, Jeff and the uh, the other developers, uh, in an awesome move, uh, after seeing how uh, how much use people were getting out of this spreadsheet, went ahead and added more data for us um, into the box score stats, which is why... Uh, in this upload page, we're now using box score skater summary and box score period scoring summary um, rather than uh, the regular season stats uh, like I had you using in, in prior versions of the spreadsheet. Um, and that's because we now have uh, a number of, of new metrics such as missed shots. Um, what else got added? Missed shots, Corsi 4 on and off, Corsi against on and off. Uh, goals for on and off and goals against on and off. So the reason these are so important is because missed shots, this uh, now includes um, shots on goal, uh, or sorry, shots taken that either get blocked or miss the net. If you add that to a player's shots on goal, you then have his individual Corsi 4 or individual shot attempts, uh, which is huge. That's a great, great stat for us to be able to look at um, and I'm really excited that it's now finally in uh, in the spreadsheets. Um, Corsi 4 uh, on and off. Um, all the on off ice metrics are also great, and I, I do have some plans to use those in the future. As of right now, they're um, uh, just goals for uh, on and goals against on are the only two I'm using, but I have some ideas for the other ones. Uh, we also got zone starts added, which uh, are also very valuable in. Uh, in the uh, expected goals um, and expected goals against stats uh, because uh, you can now take into account whether a player starts uh, a majority of the time in the offensive zone or the defensive zone. Uh, obviously, someone who starts in the offensive zone more often is going to be expected to have higher shot totals and vice versa. Someone in the defensive uh, uh, defensive start or de someone with a high amount of defensive zone starts is likely going to have a lot of shots against him um, compared to someone who starts in the offensive zone. 
you can take that into account and, and appropriately adjust the outputs um, based on that. So that is a, a huge addition. Oh, this, by the way, this is uh, this is R um, here. You don't have to understand any of this. I'm just using it as sort of an outline to go over um, what I uh, want to talk about. Um, one of the reasons that this update has taken so long is because I, I knew nothing about R when I posted the last video. Uh, I found out about it because it's what the evolving hockey guys use for their data analysis. And I had always thought that it would be uh, just totally unnecessary to use it <laughs> for a video game. But um, curiosity got the better of me, and I started messing around with it one night and realized how much more powerful it was than Google Sheets. Um, and, and I knew I had to figure out a way to uh, share this product with you guys. Um, so with this new data and with this new uh, data manipulation tool in R, uh, what we now have is two linear regression models to come up with our expected goals metrics. So the way that we do it is first we take a look at the relationship between even strength goals and shot attempts. That's a simple linear regression, the idea being that the more shot attempts a player takes, the more goals he's going to score, right? Um, that is done for both forwards and defensemen. Uh, and then the inverse is done, goals against on, uh, linear relationship with Corsi against on. Uh, so again, more shots taken against you while you're on the ice, the more goals you're expected uh, to give up. Okay, so now we have those two numbers. So now we have we have Corsi translated to goals, uh, both for and against. We can then take that information and say, okay, a player's individual Corsi, well, what's the relationship between his individual Corsi and his hits, time on ice, giveaways, zone starts, uh, and from that derive a uh, an expected number of shot attempts. Um, all of these uh, different things impact uh, a player's uh, expected shot attempts uh, in different degrees. Uh, and I've narrowed it down to just these uh, five uh, stats because they are the ones that, according to the linear model, have the highest influence on the Corsi uh, shot attempts. Uh, that are output. So uh, the same thing is then done for um, uh, Corsi against on. So again, what we're doing here is finding the linear relationship between these stats, uh, and then we can use the output of that, right? Because that produces a line, linear relationship. A line is produced. The slope of that line is a, a, a mathematical equation that can then be applied to any player's stats at any given time to figure out how many shot attempts he's expected to have. And since we've converted shot attempts to goals prior, we can then say he's expected to have this many goals because we have predicted his shot attempts. Okay, that's where the new expected goal model comes from. And it's it's awesome. And you know, you'll know uh, uh, previously my expected goals predictions weren't that far off. Uh, they were pretty pretty accurate, but they relied on shots on goal. And I didn't like that because shots on goal uh, is very linear, linearly related to goals scored. So it's just better to get rid of that by adding in all shot attempts, not just the ones that hit the net, um, and you get uh, much cleaner numbers. So that is um, the new expected goals model. Now, for replacement level stats, before I said I was using the uh, 23rd percentile of NHL players that was sort of the generally accepted level for replacement. But Evolving Hockey uh, discussed some drawbacks to that, and I agree with those, uh, those drawbacks. So with R, I was able to do the same replacement level um, uh, calculation to figure out who falls into our bucket of replacement level players uh, as they are. And and the way it's done is we look at forwards and defensemen separately 
and we combine the stats of every single forward in the NHL who is below 13th. <laughs> okay, bear with me. He's below 13th in ice time for his team. So we look at each team at their roster, sort the forwards by time on ice, and then get rid of the top 13 guys. So your 14th through however many other forwards are the ones that we're looking at. Okay, so that's done for, for every team, uh, both forwards and defensemen. So we have replacement level defensemen, replacement level forwards. Their stats are then, uh, like I said, added all together. And then we, um, we take their time on ice. Uh, we divide these stats by their time on ice to figure out their stats per minute. So we have their goals per minute. Uh, that is then converted to goals above average per minute. Uh, goals against above average per minute, and then the Corsi numbers. Um, uh, so we have expected, actual, above average per minute. And then we jump into back to our full data set, and you take every player in the league, and you multiply his time on ice by the per minute stats of the replacement level player to figure out what a replacement level player would have contributed to the team in the same amount of time you take that that number is then subtracted from the uh above average stats uh of the player we're considering and that gives you above replacement <laughs> it's a lot i understand there's some awesome articles out there that explain it way better than i could um but the ultimate uh uh outcome here what we're what we're ultimately working towards relates back to what we discussed in the first part, which is that we have a linear relationship between Corsi and goals, right? So this new model looks at how many shot attempts, individual shot attempts above replacement a player uh, takes, as well as how many shot attempts against his team a player allows. We convert both of those values into goals and you subtract the uh, goals allowed from the goals scored to come up with your goals above replacement. That means that we now have uh, uh, a way to measure defensive impact in goals, and that is goals prevented. So if a, a player stops five goals, um, negative five goals above replacement, that means he stopped five goals that a replacement player would have allowed. You subtract that 5 from his positive 5. 5 minus negative 5 is 10. A player has 10 goals above replacement. Uh, I kind of discussed that in the last one, but uh, I wanted to go over it again here just to, just to reiterate that this is still operating the same. The only difference is now we're using the Corsi numbers because we have this shot attempt data, uh, which gives us a much more clear picture of, of you know, just because a goal wasn't scored on a shot attempt against doesn't mean it couldn't have been and statistically there's a chance that it should have been so we're able to measure defensive impact now with this uh Corsi against on um data that were provided and same with the the individual Corsi 4 numbers um you know we're we're getting a clearer picture of someone who might have you know a low number of goals but if it's because he doesn't take a lot of shots that doesn't mean he's he's a bad player he might just be more defensive his goals above replacement is going to increase to show that he is having a defensive impact uh on his team and you can translate that impact to goals so <laughs> if you're still with me the end result of all of that might look a little strange to you. Uh, let's see if I can find someone where is a good example. Right here, Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne has 14 even strength goals, expected goals of 18, so he scored fewer than is expected, but his goals above replacement is 23.4. Okay? That means, right, 
you can't look at goals above replacement and actual goals and say, well, a replacement level player would have scored negative, what, negative nine goals in this amount of time? Well, technically, yes. A replacement level player would have given up nine more goals than he would have scored in Matt Duchesne's amount of ice time. Matt Duchesne didn't. Matt Duchesne outscored that negative nine by quite a bit. Therefore, his GAR is 23.4. Even though he didn't score 23 or 24 goals, whatever, he's preventing goals uh, or preventing shots that have a chance at resulting in goals, thereby increasing his goals above replacement. Again, I know that this is a lot to take in, especially if you're unfamiliar with this this model. Uh, I highly recommend checking out uh, the Evolving Hockey write-up on replacement uh, goals above replacement and wins above replacement. Is that's pretty much where all of my modeling is coming from. I've I've adapted it to fit with um, the the data that comes out of Franchise Hockey Manager, um, but the philosophy behind it is the same. So. War is still the same. We have that coefficient of goals to wins, um, and that's all done under the hood. Uh, so the unfortunate consequence of that is I'm finding that um, that since war is just a, a the same number um, multiplied by you know it's a, basically a percentage. It's a, a the, 13% of the goals above replacement equals war. Well, that means that when you look at uh, league trailers in war uh, and gar, it's the same players. The list doesn't change, and that's because everyone is having the same uh, uh, multiplier added. Um, so I might need to make some changes there, but for now, the foundation of my gar and war models are exactly where I want them to be. You, you see you now have guys that get up close to nine um, war. And I'm, I am still have a, f a few games left. I think I'm 10 games away from the end of the season. Um, so they might probably still will go up, but should settle in between. I've seen, you know, seven and a half to, to nine and a half is kind of the max end of, of war uh, that gets produced. And then league trailers in war. Um, for forwards, you know, you're going to see as low as, as negative five, um, but normally negative three to negative four is where, where guys settle in. Um, but to confirm that this is operating as intended, you can see here, this is an export that I did of my, um, uh, my war distribution among all NHL skaters at the trade deadline of 2023. So this this uh, chart is a little bit older than um, the save that I'm using in this video, but you can see that the distribution here makes sense. That that a majority of players are at zero war, um, and then as you spread out from zero, the the numbers drop off. But but the bell curve um, is there. There are a couple, I guess you could call them anomalies, where you know you wouldn't expect there to be an increase. Uh, in these spots, but I, I think that that is more a result of um, this not being separated by forwards and defensemen. Um, this is just all skaters, so uh, it, it probably would have been smarter to break it into those two uh, positional groups, but um, regardless, uh, this is um, encouraging. It, it shows that, you know, we're, we're centering around zero with zero being our average um and then replacement level being above or below average so uh i uh <laughs> i appreciate anyone who has stuck around to the end of this um i love talking about this stuff it, it's so much fun and i get you know, so much satisfaction out of it and i want to give a huge 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 thank you to jeff um and the other guys at uh, Franchise Hockey Manager for uh, allowing me to continue on with this project and indulging me a little bit by providing some more data um, that wasn't in the CSVs before. Uh, hopefully, there's room for more stats in the future. Um, 
I've been, you know, I've mentioned to Jeff a couple times kind of what my dream stats are, and he certainly got a ton of them uh, with this update. But um, the more information we have, the the more fun this is going to get. So, um, yeah, I think that covers everything. If I missed anything, uh, I'll be sure to amend this uh, description and um, provide some additional details. But for now, uh, I think that's it. Enjoy, everyone. If you have any questions or run into problems, as always, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Let me know. Uh, have fun, and I will see you again soon. Thanks.